This is Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We are joined by Mike Spence. He is a member of the West Covina City Council, also a rumored candidate for the California State Assembly. Sir, should you throw your hat in the ring, and you may by the time this airs, uh, why have you decided to look at a potential seat in the California State Assembly? Well, I served as, as a chief of staff to two different assembly members, so I'm you quite did. familiar with what assembly members do. But I would run because I'm, I'm tired of sending nice people to Sacramento. Uh, I think it's time to send somebody that knows how to get stuff done and to point out the problems, uh, to make uh, the government more accountable, to point out the government waste that's going on up there. Uh, because there's too much uh, going on up in Sacramento that people don't even know about because there's not a lot of media coverage about it. So that I, is true. Sacramento is not well covered in the mainstream media. I mean, I'm proud that we're trying to get the word out about Sacramento uh, in some way, shape, or form. But let me ask you, though, how you do that if, presuming the status quo stays the same, you would be a member of the minority party? Um, that's not to say that relations are terrible between the majority and the minority party. You know, I'm up there quite often, and it does seem as if relations are fairly good. I mean, Kurt Hagman, who, with whom you worked when he was a member of the State Assembly, great, great relations with Democrats, and they would work together. But still, I mean, majority, minority party. How do you make that work as a member of the minority? Uh, well, you, that means you have to uh, be creative in how right. you present stuff, but you have to be active and actually look for things to point out to the public right. about how their money is being wasted and to force Democrats to be accountable. And I think that's something that can be done. Uh, that's something I've tried in West Covina is to hold, sure. hold government accountable and to point out the waste uh, in taxpayer money. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things we're going to be talking about with the yes. audit. But I think, that, you know, there's audits done in Sacramento all the time. They get published, right. and then all the things just die. No one says a word. And, you and it's important to say a word. It's important to be active. Right. People are frustrated, I think, that their tax dollars aren't being used wisely, and they're being wasted. And, uh, you know, they work hard for those, that money, and they want to see government work. And so I think uh, pointing that out and being active is, I think, very, very key in order to uh, engage the public and to get them involved in this and, and to listen to what they have to say about how they can change government. So let's talk about the audit you just referenced. Uh, sir, the audit was scathing in its scope. And for our viewers, the controller of the state of California, Betty Yee, issued an audit at the request of the West Covina City Council. And I believe you were one of the people that spearheaded that right. request. Yeah. And I, I just got to read from one portion of the audit because it was absolutely remarkable. At one point, she writes, the city's administrative and internal accounting control deficiencies are serious and pervasive. In effect, controls are non-existent. Non-existent. Are we dealing with the Bell situation here? Uh, we're not dealing with the Bell situation because Bell turned out to be worse because everybody was on the take. Right. You know, here what we have is we had a city council, a previous city council, right. that was not engaged in running the city and hiring good, competent staff. And we had a staff that either remained silent or were complicit in doing a lot of things that they shouldn't have been doing. And so what we had was that perfect storm. And that's one of the reasons I wanted the audit after the three new council members got elected right. was so that we could go back see what happened from the state controller's perspective, and then that provides a blueprint for us as a city council that we can point to the public and say, look, we fixed this. Right. This was a problem. This no longer but, happens. Sir, and even, that's why we did that. Even you who called for the audit, did you expect it to be as blistering as it was? I don't know if it blistering. I knew there were problems. You know, the sad part is there were 79 things that uh, oh. the controller tested, and it turns out the city of West Camino is really good at seven of them. Yeah, 91% seven. Yeah, exactly. deficiencies. Um, and uh, by any standard, that's flunking. Right. And the city of West Camino, for the, for the period of time that they looked at, the, the previous few years, right. had flunked. And uh, fortunately, we've already corrected some of those things as a council. And let's talk about that. Yeah, and we're moving forward with this as a, as right. a blueprint. Because so often, audits will be issued. Oh, isn't this nice? Bye -bye. That's what I was saying about Sacramento. Yeah, That's bye -bye. what I was saying about Sacramento. Yeah. Yeah. And so have you, your colleagues, look, you're, you're a council of five. Right. I presume you need three to get these uh, recommendations adopted. Have you been able to get that uh, coalition together? In, you know, what's interesting, in our council, uh, it's very diverse, right. um, and we have a lot of different opinions right. and a lot of different backgrounds. But on this, right. we have been united in focusing on transparency to the public. Because one of the things that this clearly points out is that the people can no, could no longer trust right. the city of West Covina. When the city of West Covina said something, uh, it was probably lying because its, its mouth was moving. Whoa. So we had to change that. And 
you, this council, even though we're diverse on lots of different right. things, uh, we've been united on trying to, uh, to have this kind of transparency, and we've corrected some of those things already. I, I have to ask you, though, West Covina, over 100,000 residents. Bell, uh, what was it? I mean, it, it's a tiny it's city. Smaller, yeah. Tiny city with a small staff. West Covina staff, you know, close to 400 people. How, I don't know, like with Bell, you could almost see how it could happen because there were so few people on the payroll and you just had to bamboozle a few to make it. How did this happen for so long? Well, clearly the city council did nothing about it and the staff did nothing about it. You know, we, uh, you know, that's one thing that frustrates me. A lot of times staff, after they left, right. they'll sue the city of West Covina. Oh. We just had this case and we settled it right. and uh, I, over my objection right. because I have a problem settling lawsuits with former employees. Uh, who admit to wrongdoing, who admit they saw wrongdoing right. and didn't say anything about it. You know, we have whistleblower laws, but not only that, people have an obligation if they claim to be working for the city, for the taxpayer, to actually come up and say something if they see something wrong, and they haven't done that. I understand that the malfeasance was so dramatic that the city's reserves have been depleted. Um, are you on the verge of insolvency? We are on the uh, verge of insolvency. We do have some issues uh, with re a, a case on redevelopment, right. that if it goes against us, it would this. it would be right. uh, it would hurt our reserves. Um, we're not insolvent. Uh, we have cash flow. We still have our police department. Uh, it was cut dramatically before okay. uh, you know the last election um, in 2013. But um, you know we still have a police department. We still have a fire department. We're still providing some, some uh, functions. Mm -hmm. But there's so much money that was wasted mm -hmm. by uh, previous councils and by staff mm -hmm. that didn't say anything or went along with it. That you know we you know we need to come clean with the public, which is what this is about, and then correct everything in a very public fashion so the public can have confidence we're not wasting their tax dollars, not wasting their time, mm -hmm. and that we're providing what we promise. Uh, Controller Yee, in the report, indicated that there were possible criminal violations. Yes. She also indicated, and I did not know this, that the statute of limitations in this type of scenario is but one year. Yes. So and, uh, actually, if you go to Sacramento, uh, is that something? Well, you're actually, actually, you know, it's funny because yeah. Assemblyman Roger Hernandez, right. uh, there's a bill, AB 1505, that he's uh, getting and amending to actually change it that it's not the statute of limitations begins once the crime has been discovered Interesting. Uh, for one year right. that there's to, to, to file charges. Right. And, you know, that's one of the issues. It's kind of like if someone commits a crime, they just hunker down and hope exactly. no one finds it for a year right. and then they're in the clear. Right. Um, and so for this type of uh, public. Uh, malfeasance. He's talking about changing uh, the statute of limitations. So it's but from. He was on the council. He was on the council it's been previously a while. too. It's since uh, 06. Yeah. Right. So maybe. So, um, yeah. And he was in the minority part of the time. And okay. some of these things actually did deal with issues surrounding uh -huh. him. But, um, you know, the key is to have a law where it's from the time the crime's discovered right. that you have to file charges, not that you can that, get away with it for a year. That could be a bit onerous in some ways. I mean, you go back 20 years, you find a crime. I mean, what, what do you well, think? Well, we're talking about the kind of level here that the you know, right. controller's talking about. That mm -hmm. is something that we have to look at is, you know, can we just let people hopefully right. get through the process because it takes a year. You know, it took, right. it took the audit, it took the state controller like nine months right. to do the audit. So, I mean, you know, we have to have some kind of reasonable basis so on being able to file charges. On the streets of West Covina, in your beautiful malls, I, I frequent them often. Are people talking about this? Are they aware? Actually, I got emails about this from you people did. I've never heard of, oh, wow. never seen, don't know. So um, in some ways that's so, good. So in some ways it's, it's good because people are focusing on right. what the problems are. They're happy that you know the council's being proactive and right. trying to solve it, and we're being open about it, which sure. is uh, you know important. So you feel um, good about so this. I, I do. I do feel good because, right. like I said, we've corrected some of this stuff already, and not only that, the public can see. Look, they did fix that. They right. did fix that. They aren't just getting their own streets paved. Right. They aren't just yeah, getting. That was one of the allegations. They aren't just right. getting their own stuff done. They're actually doing everything in public so everyone can see it. And I think that's important. His name is Mike Spence. He is a member of the West Covina City Council, potential candidate for the California State Assembly in the 55th Assembly District. My name is Brad Pomerantz, and you are watching Shutter Local Edition.